Peace family, it's Mr. Real Estate, Jay Morrison, and I've climbed my way out of poverty and prison to become a multi-millionaire real estate developer. But none of that matters now. It's all about my people. The black community needs unity, justice, and repair. So I moved my company from New York City all the way down to ATL so we can change the culture. It's the solution. I'm so excited right now because I got this opportunity to work with someone who reminds me so much of me. And just knowing the spaces that I come out of and knowing that over the last 12 years, I've been able to transact over $20 million in real estate um, and that I've been able to create successful multi-million dollar companies. But I know in which I came from. I know from the corners I came from, the block I came from. I know the struggles I had. I know what poverty really feels like. I know what prison really feels like. I'm Ken Kev from Baltimore City. And I'm here to inspire and be an example to my people, like my friends, my family, anybody that ever made a sacrifice for me, came in contact with me, anybody that grew up like me in the same situations as me, that just lived that life like me. And I'm here to show you a different way, a better way where you can prosper. And I had the pleasure of meeting Jay. And knowing that there's so many of us stuck in the ghetto and in the inner cities and in Baltimore and Atlanta and Houston and Chicago and Detroit and Newark and Patterson and Brooklyn and Bronx and Queens and Compton and Watts and just all over the country, we all got the same story. And, um, you know, to have someone that is making a uh, 100% effort and transition uh, into the business world and into education and into knowledge of self and knowledge of wealth and just um, being so passionate about it and hungry and just seeing the intellect and brilliance that you know King Kev has and so to see him be so smart and to see him digest the real estate information and the lessons and the strategies that we teach and have a passion to give back that same information to his people, to his sphere of influence, to his city, um, you know, he has a light heart as me. And I just know that with him as my protege, with him as my, my brother, with him as a partner, with him as a coaching client, with him just rocking with me, I know that I can make him a living example of what we all can do. Everybody has seen my transition, but you know, I'm 12 years now removed and you know, I'm like the OG in the game. So it's always good to see that fresh face, that fresh energy and someone that's real and relatable you can relate to. And um, you know, we do this for all the real ones. It's like. We all come from the same fraternity, you know what I mean? Like, we ain't go to college, like, we don't got that fraternity. You know, we got our own fraternity, our own way of life, our own code. And, you know, we just trying to rep for the have-nots. Everybody that had come from a hard environment and a hard space, we trying to show you that you could clean up, um, not just your look and your image, but just really clean out your mind and just give a new perspective and just know that, like, we could do whatever we want to do. Like, it's just a matter of us being intentional about it and betting on ourselves. And so this opportunity for me as a mentor and as a coach and a big brother to um, you know, take King Kev and help elevate him and help give him the tools and the resources and the support that he needs and the encouragement he needs to be his greatest, you know, that's what we're here for. You know, I believe in each one teach some. And you know, this is how we elevate as a community. This is how we win as a people. And this is the solution. Now that I know this and I, I'm gonna I'm here just to help and be like a vehicle to help other people like me make a transition into a better way of life. Peace family, it's Jay Morrison, Mr. Real Estate, AKA Young Malcolm. I'm here with my brother, Big Kev, out of Baltimore, uh, one of my protégés, clients, partners, and all that. Just someone um, who I built a relationship with and who uh, is really serious about tackling the real estate industry, but also empowering our community. And that's the whole heart and spirit of the Jay Morrison Academy, like my movement, like my brand, like my, my movement isn't about, um, we do a lot of social activism, uh, a lot of community work, but we believe in re-educating our people and teaching us everything we've never been taught, especially in regards to finances. And I just teach it from us, from my heart, because of everything that I went through and where I came from, coming up in poverty and coming up through the streets and going through prison and everything else to figuring out that, yo, it's another way out. It's a lot of ways out. And so um, 
I moved here to Atlanta, as I say in the solution series, I moved here to Atlanta strictly to change the culture. Like I ain't come here to, to date. I didn't come here to be fly. I didn't come here to peel through the city and tear it up. I came here or, or even to develop the most real estate in the city. I sat down with one of my brothers, Ramon Tooks, another developer in the city, and I told him, like, Ramon, run with the real estate thing. How I can support you, I'll support you. When we raise this 50 million with Tulsa, like, I'll, I'll fund your deals. But um, I'm not interested in being the biggest real estate guy. I'm interested in being the biggest and best community repair guy, the biggest black love guy, the biggest um, how we uplift our people guy, right? So in doing that, we brought my development company and we brought our school, the J. Morrison Academy, here to Atlanta. My office is on Peachtree and 14th, 1170 Peachtree Street. Um, and so, you know, I'm really in the city and I moved my residence here as well. And we wanted to do a brick and mortar JMA. Like my school has been online for three years now, going on four years, but we haven't had a physical location in which our students can come weekly. And so we found a spot as we search, literally, I won't say hundreds, but I'll literally say dozens of spots in the city, you know, venues to host our Jay Morrison Academy. I actually was gonna buy a school on the west side, but it was just too complicated in the negotiations to do so quickly. So um, I'll look at spots that we can lease to have our school. And I found a black owned establish establishment called the Ga Gathering Spot here in um, Atlanta. And I said, you know what, this would be pretty cool. It's trendy, it's owned by two young you know, black guys, et cetera, it has a nice story behind it. And it fit our initiative for community empowerment. So I thought, and so I reached out to the CEO through my assistant to his team. And before we uh, became members of the Gathering Spot, I tried to get a sit down with the owner. I think his name was Ryan Wilson. And so I tried to get a sit down with them two or three times. I had, a, had my, my assistant Whitney send over my resume, my bio, like, yo, like I'm not no lightweight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wanna, we just businessmen, we just brothers. Let's have a call, let's sit down about me bringing my school that's had over 6,000 students to your institution to empower our community, young professionals, and to bring more you know, awareness to your institution and your venue, right? I felt it'd be a good cross promotion play. And so I couldn't even get a meeting, which was all right. You know, I have no ego. And so I still supported the business and we contracted them to house RJ Morrison Academy. And I met with one of the owners when I took a tour of the establishment. Um, so we did our grand opening last night, February 9th. And you know, we put out some marketing for our grand opening of JMA Atlanta campus. And we reserved our rooms at the gathering spot. And um, we had over a hundred people come out People drove from Orlando, from Tennessee, from Alabama. Uh, people flew in from Baltimore and other places to attend this J. Morrison Academy live campus in Atlanta. It was a pretty big deal. And I was excited and I was sharing my personal story in a lecture and um, we had an overflow. And so we were gonna do two or three classes to kind of cover everybody in our classroom. And the owners came in and said to me, um, our second class couldn't participate. And I didn't know anything about this, so I went out and spoke to them. He said, someone else reserved your room. And I said, that's funny, we had it reserved. And so we went back and forth. And I'm gonna get to a whole point of this story, but I wanna give you guys some, some context. So we went back and forth speaking about it. So I had my team research the bookings for the membership of the gathering spot, and the venue was actually vacant. They turned away over 70 of my constituents, 70 of my supporters, 70 of my family, who came out to hear a free lecture of my life story of how I came from poverty and prison and how I figured out ways we all can make it and that I, that I give back authentically to our community. They turned people away and made them stand out in the cold. And I didn't appreciate that. And then they told me a lie as to why they turned them away. And so anyway, leaving the venue, I had a, some dialogue and I ran into the, the founder and the CEO, Ryan Wilson. And so he said to me, you put us in a tough spot having so many people come here and people from all walks of life and people came in smelling like marijuana and you know I have doctors here and lawyers here and you know he pointed to one of his venues that had another audience and I said King I can't control you know what people smell like I don't have medical medical conditions or what you know whatever but I can't control what they smell like or how many people come um but I and, and but I do appreciate your frustration and I apologize for the fact that we had such a turnout and it was a miscommunication between my staff and your staff because my event coordinator spoke to their work event coordinator we had a registration list but it didn't match their registration list and i apologized 
And even as he was talking, I cut him off and I said to him, I said, King, I said, oh, my bad for cutting you off. I said, continue to voice your frustration. I want to hear it, you know what I mean? Before I speak, I don't want to cut you off. He said, well, I'm done. That's my biggest problem, one of my problems. I said, what's the other? And he you know, shook his head. And so as we were talking, I said, listen, this is our first event with you. You know, I'm new to Atlanta. We have a big following and I have a lot of supporters. And he said, he cut me off and said, that's my other problem. I said, what's the problem there? He said, you're scamming our people. You got people driving up from Orlando and Tennessee. You're, you're coming here to pay you for this class. And I said, King, my class was free. It was a free class for the community. He said, to do what? I know people like you, you're scam artists. And so we had this dialogue and I got very upset. I won't say I got out of character because I was very much in my character. And I told him about himself. Um, and I said, King, I'm here in Atlanta to love our people. Like what I do in educating our people, I don't have a real estate program. I don't have just boot camps and workshops. I, I created a, a school, a educational institution to teach our people things we've never been taught. A school that has staff behind it, a, a venue location in which we have paid you money to support and house our school, right? So um, he apparently had some deeper rooted issues with me. Um, and so I told him to, uh, we talked about black love. And I said, he said, uh, you don't love our people. I said, how are you gonna tell me I don't love our people? I said, when Freddie Gray happened, where were you at? See, when Freddie Gray happened, I was living in New Jersey, but I drove down the next day and I was on the front line, ground zero in Baltimore. Like I led marches down the city hall. I protested, I spoke up for our community. When Alpha Wright happened, I asked them, where were you at? When Alpha Wright was lynched in Houston, Texas, I flew down to Houston, Texas, went on the front line with Alpha Wright's family, marching with the New Black Panther Party, defending Alpha Wright's lynching and speaking up for his injustice. When Alan Sterling happened in Louisiana, in Baton Rouge, I did a, sponsored a bus trip to Louisiana in which we stood on the front line against cops with riot gear to, uh, stand up and speak up for Alton Sterling's injustice and not to be any kind of braggadocious about it. And when our protesters got arrested during that protest, I bailed everybody out. So don't, so I take offense when someone questions my authenticity or someone questions my love for my people, our people. And so we got in a dialogue about uh, what his issue really was with me because he lied to me. He turned my constituents away. He embarrassed me and my organization and, and he, didn't do good business with us and we want to support him as a black owned business. So it's not that um, I don't recommend that anyone boycott the gathering spot here in Atlanta because they're another business in our community and I want to see them do well. I even said to him as we were leaving and I was talking about black love, he said, well, I don't love you. That's what he told me, he said, I don't love you. I said, well, King, I love you, but I don't respect you. I said, I think you're a coon and you're Uncle Tom, but I don't respect you, but I love you because you're my brother. And so that's the spirit in which I come to Atlanta with, is like, I'm not a pushover. Um, I do good business, um, but I'm firm on black love. I'm committed to our community. But we, the point is, during my MLK March and our solution series, I showed you and talked about how young people and old people were arguing on a Dr. Mar Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King walk. We had young people and old people arguing against each other about what song should we sing? Should we sing We Shall Overcome or should we say Black Lives Matter? Or, and so there was a generational gap that caused disunity. This particular situation of me trying to empower another business and a young entrepreneur, it wasn't a generational issue, we're from the same generation. The issue was the house Negro and the field Negro issue. See, I'm on the streets. I'm literally on the ground doing corner classes, trying to empower people that come from the ghettos and from poverty and trying to empower them through giving them education and resources and strategies to help feed their family, increase their net worth, and find other ways out of the hood other than what we traditionally used to. And then you have some who have come from more privileged backgrounds and look down on us who are a little more gritty and in the field and those who are in the house who look down on us. And that's what I told them. I said, there's no way you can see my love for our people and I'm constantly advocating for our upliftment on all different levels. There's no way you can see that and you think ill of me, but have no, nothing to substantiate that. You never met me personally. You never had a conversation with me. You never pulled my card on it, but you just have negative things to say because I'm just not your type of Negro. And I'm not even a Negro, but I'm not your type of king, not your type of man. So um, anyway, this is just an announcement. I want to apologize to all my supporters and followers and JMA students and students-to-be who came out 
uh, for our grand opening and were turned around and pushed into the cold, um, you know, our uh, legal team was going to be uh, addressing that. Um, but nevertheless, we are already on the search for our next JMA location and venue. So our JMA Atlanta campus will go on, of course. Um, I believe in no excuses, just results. Uh, I want to challenge all those from the educated bourgeoisie class of Africans in America to humble yourself and consider all your people. Even if you have an establishment and you want to cater to young professionals or the educated class, um, we cannot turn away those who are least amongst us, those who are struggling the most, and those who need our love, our care, um, our venues, our education, our talent, our gifts the most. And that's where I come from. I come from a place, like I said, Young Malcolm. Like, we in the streets, we, we riding with the people. And so, um, you know, I wanted to give you guys notice, and, and, and Ryan Wilson, um, I just wanted to, you know, let him know, and I told him, you know, I didn't appreciate it from a businessman to businessman. I, I, I demand more respect, I expect more respect. Um, and for uh, another brother, um, you know, I expect more um, courtesy as a brother and as a family. Like, no matter what, how we look at it, I don't care if you, you blood, you crib, you educated, you not, you alpha or you sigma or you beta or you whatever you are, you Christian, you Muslim, or whatever you are, you're African first. You're from the same community. That's your cousin right there that you're mad at, that you're cursing, that you're trying to kill or that you're hating on. Like, we don't got time for that. We already down. Like, so I'm trying to get us up. So, um, you know, just for those who can relate, this is just my, again, my, I want to put my community and my constituency where Facebook live in and where Instagram live in, I want to put y'all on notice, like, this is the real. And um, again, I'm easy to find. I'm right here in the A, 1170 Peace Tree. Um, and, you know, we just building. We building the community. JMA is here to stay. We're going to start with Atlanta campus and we'll be in many other campuses in different cities throughout the country. And we're going to keep doing our online, um, our online classes as well. Uh, Tulsa Real Estate Fund is launching in about another month or so. Um, we're still developing real estate. We're going to be acquiring about 100 doors over the next uh, 60 days. So, you know, we just working. Like, we, we lead them by example, man, and, you know, black love matters. So that goes for everybody, though, no matter what class you come from, one look you got, light skin, dark skin, big, fat, small, tall, sexual orientation, it, it don't matter, man. Like, we got to really start to love our people first. And, um, you know, I'm going to do that here in Atlanta. Like, that's the purpose of what we came for. Um, I know Kev, why he's rocking with me. Um, and he told me himself, and you'll hear some from him. But uh, it's just about, we just real ones, and we trying to uplift our community and show other people that it's a, another way out. And that, you know what I mean? Like, we really care. The thing, thing is, like, it ain't about just real estate and making money. It's about how we uplift our people as a whole. So if you're rocking with that, you're rocking with us. This is JMA all day. I'm Jay Morris and Young Malcolm, and we out. The solution. Peace. Let me care. I want to say this um, as a little aftertake. If you, if you research Marcus Garvey, uh, one, and I've read Marcus Garvey's book. Everybody should get this book. It's called The, Le the Life and Lessons of Marcus Garvey. You'll see that Marcus Garvey had three schools, two or three schools that he owned. He had his own boat he owned, the black, uh, the black nurses corps and other businesses right, that he owned. My whole point is that what we're lacking in our community is institutions. The reason why we're getting beat so bad is because we all are taught from grade school to elementary school to high school and on up, we're all taught a curriculum of information that's created by our oppressors. So we have to be intentional about creating curriculums and having institutions that are for us and by us. And that's what JMA is. Um, it's also for everybody. I say it's very universal. Anybody from any ethnicity, race, nationality could be a part of J. Morrison Academy, absolutely. But we are intentional about the upliftment and advancement and about educating those from the underserved community and the African community in America. So just letting everybody know that um, this is what we get into, um, but our, our school is set on finding ways to communicate, teach, and translate. That's why I am, I'm a translator. My mentor says I translate from the streets to the suites, is to translate uh, complicated financial topics in a way that we all can understand, all can benefit from, and use those strategies to improve our life. So that's my little outtake. IG peace, Facebook peace. See y'all.